Yes, students. So today we are going to start discussing about a different method or a new method of uh, calculating or analyzing an indeterminate structure. The method is known as consistent deformation method. So in module two, you already got introduced to two methods of analysis. One is force method and the other one is displacement method so in the end of the module 2 you got introduced to these two concepts the force method of analysis and displacement method of analysis and this method of consistent deformation belongs to the force method okay so when we talk about force method and displacement method the basic difference is that in case of a force method the forces are the primary unknowns and when forces are the primary unknown we deal with degree of static indeterminacy and if in displacement method where displacements are the primary unknowns there we will be dealing with the degree of kinematic indeterminacy so you have already seen these two terms in module 2 so this is how they are related and consistent deformation method is one of the force method the very basic force method that you are going to learn here so to better understand the concepts of force method the first thing that you should know is there are basically two determinate structures okay the very basic two determinate structures available are one is cantilever other one is a simply supported beam these are the very two basic determinate structures if we add any more support to any of this configuration they may become indeterminate so if you want to represent these two uh, determinate structures as forces we are going to have this as an arrangement like this three reactions for the fixed support and here we are going to have reactions like this okay when i say these are determinate it is because of the fact that we know that ds is calculated using the equation r minus e for a 2d beam the value of e is 3 that is sigma fx sigma fy and sigma m okay you have three equations so the number of unknowns whenever it happens to be greater than 3 the system become indeterminate so here there are three unknowns here also there are three unknowns so this is perfectly all right so these are the two determinate structures and in here itself we will be neglecting these reactions which means the horizontal reactions it is because when we generally deal with beams beams are element that are not subjected to axial load if an axial load also comes into the picture we generally deal it as a frame so for beams we can ignore these two reactions unless there is a inclined load if the loads are all in the vertical direction then we can ignore this because even if you write sigma fx equal to zero we are going to get these values as zero so we can just ignore it so if we are ignoring the horizontal forces this horizontal equation is also not valid okay so this ds can be rewritten as r minus 2 by ignoring the forces in the x direction okay so if you are ignoring all the forces in the x direction so we can have only two equations of equilibrium that is sigma fy and sigma m so the equation reduces to this form so i am uh, considering this as a system like this okay so i have ignored the two and uh, the system equation got reduced to this form because I have ignored all the forces along the x direction. So this is the very basic. Now we are going to start by this system. Fine. So what is consistent deformation method? So what we are doing here is that we will be equating the displacements at different redundance or the redundance we have already discussed in the last uh, topic when we were discussing the strain energy method we talked about redundance so here also we are going to talk about redundance so let's see the uh, consistent deformation method so this is for example i'm considering a simple case the very case that we 
started analyzing by considering a propped cantilever and let there be a loading say a UDL is there okay a UDL is acting on the system having magnitude say 2 kN per meter okay or we will put a generalized way let it be W let the span be L and the flexural rigidity be EI so if I am representing this as forces this particular configuration as forces what I am going to get is I am ignoring the horizontal component as we discussed so I'll be having two reactions here and I'll be having one reaction okay so if this is A and this is B this is RA MA RB and I have the UDL W kilonewton per meter L E I so this is the system what I'm having here now I want to use the consistent deformation so here we are going to equate the deformation of a primary structure and its substructures and we are going to write something called as a compatibility equation okay so if you are analyzing this system how many unknowns do we have the number of unknowns in the system are one two three so three as we have neglected the horizontal it's going to be two so I'm going to have the DS value as one which means there is one degree of static indeterminacy so I cannot directly use the Sigma Fy and Sigma M equal to zero equation to solve this this concept we had discussed when we started analyzing indeterminate structures using strain energy method so now what I'm going to do is this is my primary structure I can convert this into substructures okay construction of substructure depends on the basic Rajinikan principle that we have discussed earlier it is the principle of superposition so you can see here there are a lot of forces in the system and we know that if there are if we are handling one villain at a time it is pretty easy to solve so we are going to divide this into substructures which are manageable just like we'll be dealing one villain at a time so how to do that so for doing this the first thing what I need to do is I need to fix a basic structure the basic structures are these two whether I should choose the cantilever profile or I should do, choose the simply supported profile that is the very first decision that we need to make so I am st first trying with the cantilever configuration so if I am converting this into a cantilever configuration so this can be represented like this we know that a fixed support can be represented as two reactions so it's going to be something like this okay and on this we are having the load UDL okay and another load which is RB okay now this UDL and RB are loads acting on this cantilever beam or the primary system okay these two means that this end is fixed that's why we are having two reactions so this is the cantilever representation of this figure now if I want to represent this as a simply supported beam how can I do that that can also be done which means that in case of a simply supported beam I can have two reactions one reaction here another reaction here so I will be representing these two reactions and what will be the load in that case whatever that is left what is left in the system okay this and a moment ma so now the structure is simply supported acted upon by a udl and a moment when i'm considering the structure as cantilever it is subjected to a udl and a point load so this is the very basic thing that we want to understand how to divide a structure into substructures okay so now for solving this problem I can either use this configuration or I can use this configuration both are going to give the results okay so let's see this so I'm continuing so we are continuing with the same problem so this is W and uh, I have a roller support uh, this value is W L E I so now 
we are attempting to solve it. So I'm going to use the principle of superposition here. So this structure, say I'm starting with the configuration of cantilever. Okay, I'm starting with the cantilever configuration. So this structure will be represented, this given structure will be represented as a cantilever subjected to two types of load. One is the UDL, other one is the reaction RB. Okay, let this be A, this be B. Fine. Now, here I am going to apply the principle of superposition. So this given structure has got two loads. Okay, one UDL is there, one RP is there. So combined effect is like the Rajanigan case. Handling two villains at a time is difficult. So I'm going to deal one at a time. So what I'm going to do is I will be splitting this into two. Okay, so a cantilever subjected to a UDL plus a cantilever subjected to a point load okay a cantilever subjected to UDL and a cantilever subjected to point load when I add these two as per principle of superposition I should get this structure so this is my primary structure okay this is my primary structure and these are the substructures okay this is substructure 1 this is substructure 2 okay so we have considered cantilever and we have got this now in the second method I am trying the basic configuration as a simply supported beam okay then how will it be the primary structure will be a simply supported beam acted upon by two loads what are the loads one load will be the UDL and what I have ignored here I have ignored the moment at this point so the other one is the moment okay so now this is the beam the primary structure so both configuration are perfectly fine so depending upon the problem we can either choose a cantilever as the uh, basic structure or a simply supported beam as the basic structure whichever we prefer the calculations are going to be according to that so this is a primary structure which can be divided so there are two villains one is this UDL other one is moment so I'm separating them out so in the first structure I'm going to place the UDL alone and in the second one I'm going to place the moment okay. so we have the primary structure and we have the uh, substructures now if you are feeling it a bit difficult to appreciate it so the easiest way is to first construct this as a beam of forces okay a beam of forces so this is the case RA MA and RB and here I have W so in this I should have all these values okay you can see here when I put it as fixed RA and MA has been taken care of this UDL W is there this RB it's there so the primary structure is fine now here when I uh, take a simply supported profile RA and RB okay those reactions are taken care of MA I have substituted W also I have substituted it is fine so whatever it is you just need to have this either in a cantilever profile or in a simply supported profile okay now we are going to talk about the method consistent deformation so here also we should write this is substructure 1 substructure 2 okay so these are alternate solution you can either use this one or use this one you are going to get the same result now here is what we are going to do with the method of consistent deformation if we see the primary beam how is this beam going to deflect the deflection we have discussed in a previous video so this is fixed end so for some portion it's going to be straight line then it will deflect like this because of the load and here it is a hinge so the um, bending starts from the that point itself so this is what the displaced profile is so here also how is going to be the displaced profile the displaced profile I can actually say okay here there's a moment and because of the moment so we will work on this 
because assuming the display profile from here it's a bit difficult because of the action of moment we may have to predict how it's going to bend and all those things so the best thing is draw it in the given problem okay here itself you can plot the deflection right this is how i'm getting the deflection now you if you observe you are going to find one thing think about the substructure this is the first substructure how will it bend this will be deflecting like this what about this one this will be deflecting like this okay now here how will it deflect because of the load it will be deflecting like this okay because of this how will be the deflection it is like a simply supported beam and i'm applying a moment right if i apply a moment it's going to okay uh, this is a simply supported beam and i'm going to apply a moment so it is going to bend like this so i'm going to get a profile like this okay because of ma now if we observe okay i'm starting with here so here i got say i got this displacement as uh, let this value be i'm calling it as y1 and this value i'm calling it as y2 now i'm going to compare the substructure with my primary structure or the original structure in the primary structure i have a downward displacement of y1 here and in the substructure too, I'm having an upward displacement of Y2. And if we can add these two to the, get the original structure, at the original structure point B, the total deflection is zero because this is a support. So from this, I will be getting my compatibility equation, which says that Y1 plus Y2 has to be zero because for the primary structure, the displacement here is zero. And when I add these two, I should get the displacement of the primary structure, which is zero. So this is the additional equation that we can use to analyze this particular beam. Okay, now what about here? Here, for the original structure, the displacement or the rotation at this point, we know that when it's a fixed end, both the vertical displacement and rotation is zero. So the rotation is zero for the primary structure. And what about here? Here I'm having some rotation. Here also I'm having some rotation. I'm calling it as say theta 1 and theta 2. So now on comparison we'll be getting when I add the rotations of this point of the substructures I should get the rotation of the at the same point for the original structure which is 0. That is I can write the equation theta 1 plus theta 2 equal to 0. So this is the approach of consistent deformation. Okay. And why we went for that? Because we are having three unknowns and we were having two equations. This is the third equation. Now, two equations are available, sigma FY and sigma M. Apart from that, we are having the third equation. So using three equations, we can definitely solve three unknowns. That is the basic concept we are using in consistent deformation method. Okay, so now we have written this by how to get the value of y1 and y2, theta1 and theta2. For that, there are different methods available. You have already learned unit load method in the module 2 to calculate the displacements and rotations using unit load method. When you were dealing with mechanics of solids in the third sem, there you have learned another method which is moment area method. Okay, you are you have learned that, but you may, may not be remembering the steps as such, but you have learned that method. Or you have learned the double integration method. So different methods are available to calculate the displacements. You can use any method to solve for y1 and y2. But for these video lectures or the series of lectures, we will be using the unit load method. But I won't say that that's a uh, most economical method because it's a bit time consuming compared to some other methods but we need to reinforce the concept of unit load method as questions are going to be the from module 2 to calculate displacement where you are supposed to use a unit load method so practicing unit load method is very beneficial both for module 3 and for module 2 so we are going to stick on to unit load method for the displacement calculation and we have in the 
first few videos we have discussed about the concept of unit load method we will be applying a unit load a unit load a point load a point force or a point moment or a unit moment depending upon the type of displacement we want and the expression was displacement is equal to integral m m dx by ei and if you are closely observing it is very similar to the expression we used for the case of theorem of least work what was it in the in that case what was the right hand side or the left hand side of the equation it was integral m m dot dx by ei and you can see here here is small m here is m dot everything else is same okay there what we were doing was we were equating this to zero as per theorem of least work here we want the displacement value it may be zero or may not be it may be a non-zero value and for that we are going to use this concept integral m m dx by ei where m is the moment okay expression for moment due to unit load okay so before referring to the next video in the series i will strongly recommend you to go back to the video in which we have used the unit load method to calculate the vertical deflection and also the slope because from next lecture onwards we'll be continuing with that process okay thank you